Ah, karma, one of the most satisfying things in the world, to see someone get their comeuppance for their wrongdoings, even if it takes some time for that to happen. But when it does happen, especially on a TV show, it makes for some juicy television. What's going on guys, I'm Flint Masters, and today, we'll be looking at five satisfying moments of karma in Hell's Kitchen. Before we begin, please be sure to hit that subscribe and like button, as this is the place to be for long and short form HK content. With all that said, let's watch the Hell's Kitchen gods take over, and release their karma on Hell's Kitchen contestants for their wrongdoings. Bloody hell, here I go again. One of the first moments of karma in Hell's Kitchen came in season 2. Sarah, who was just a general nasty character, didn't get along with Virginia whatsoever, and she didn't take her seriously for being one of the weakest chefs on the red team. So, just to essentially F with her, Sarah sabotaged Virginia in spite during the middle of service. Paula, I'm ready and wait for your call. Can we start bringing these plates up? I'm ready. Okay. Where's the turbo? Chef. In the, I haven't fired it yet. No. She said that she's ready. She didn't even start cooking it. She did start cooking it, Chef. So now you want to start lying to me. I'm not lying to you, Chef. She said that she's ready when I am. How close are you to the turbo? I'm ready. Wait for your call. I'm ready. So, where's the f turbo? Did I misunderstand you when I heard you say you were ready whenever I am? Um, it was Tortellini. I didn't hear the turbo. Chef Franzi can't stand you right now. I don't necessarily see that as such a bad thing. I'm just trying to figure out what happened there. He called me a liar, and I didn't. I seriously thought you said that's that we're on time. That's what he does, because you know what? He's just making you better. You know, you take your friendships, you put them aside, and you want you want the gold ticket. To have Chef Ramsay call me a liar, and it just breaks my heart. However, despite it being somewhat controversial, Virginia outlasted Sarah's wildest expectations and was able to make it to the final four along with Sarah and would win the final four immunity challenge, guaranteeing herself a spot in the final three. But after a horrendous service, Ramsey revoked her immunity and thus Virginia seemed like an obvious goner. However, when she and Sarah were put up for elimination, Ramsey gave Virginia the choice of staying in the competition if she wanted to. And so, Sarah's Hell's Kitchen dream and spot in the final three relied on someone who she considered inferior, sabotage and spite, and nearly got her eliminated with that sabotage. Safe to say, the decision was an easy one for Virginia. Well, hell no, I don't want to go. I want to freaking stay. You want to know why? Because I want to. <laughs> I respect your decision. Sarah. Chef. Take off your jacket. Yes, Chef. And leave Hell's Kitchen. And I'm worried that maybe I'm just really not good enough to do great things. One of the biggest cliches in Hell's Kitchen is that oftentimes during the reward challenges, when the chefs are asked to choose the dishes to present to Ramsay and the guests, this means that they also have to drop some dishes from the challenge. A lot of times, it's proven to be the wrong decision, as the drop dish ends up being better than one or more of the actual dishes presented. Now, this can be somewhat harsh to criticize, as the chefs have limited time to make this tough decision, but nonetheless, there's been a couple times where this was completely self-inflicted. The first instance came in Season 7, as Benjamin was hell-bent on dropping Siobhan's dish from the challenge, and even still defended his decision after this cost him the challenge. Just one of the many early signs that Benjamin simply did not belong in the final two that season. Decide who has the worst sandwich. 30 seconds. Bread is not good with so soft bread and then the I sear like looks my, light. I don't care. If I got Siobhan's sandwich when I was eating at a restaurant, I'd be pissed and I would want my money back. Who's standing out? Siobhan, chef. Siobhan. I would not serve that sandwich out of my kitchen. That's fine. Okay. That's your personal that's, opinion. It's that's not fine. my personal opinion. This is my professional opinion. And if you don't know what you're doing and you just start putting stuff together and you need to ask for help, you need to do that. I'm purely confident in my decision. Now, with the score tied, Chef Ramsay is tasting Siobhan's sandwich before he declares a winner. Mm. I actually prefer that to Fran's. You should have sent Siobhan's dish instead of Fran's. For that, blue team, you win. And then in the episode 5 reward challenge of season 9, the red team didn't even bother tasting Carrie's dish since she was considered their weakest chef. However, after the two teams were tied, this decision would end up costing them the challenge as Ramsey gave the tiebreaker to the blue team as punishment for the red team not presenting Carrie's dish as it was a far better dish than Elizabeth's and most certainly would have earned them a point had the red team been courteous enough to actually choose it. The red team must choose which prawn dish will be presented, Carrie's or Elizabeth's. I'd like Liz's. Look at it. You're saying you like Elizabeth's. You haven't even tasted Carrie's. Exactly. Carrie has disappointed us in the past, and I definitely don't want to lose another challenge. Whose dish are we dropping? Carrie. Carrie chef. Why are we dropping Carrie's? I think Elizabeth tastes good and looks better. Can I taste yours, please? Yes, chef. Yeah. I think I would have preferred this to that one, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got a great dish. It gives that vibrance in the mouth. 
Thank you, sir. The best dish sat on the side. Blue team, congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. And a spa is probably the best prize we could have gotten, and we lost it. This next bit of karma might not be satisfying per se, as both parties involved here aren't exactly rootable characters, but nonetheless, I feel like I have to mention it for the video. In season four, Match was constantly underestimated by his fellow Boo teammates, treating him like an afterthought, which infuriated him, as he felt certain individuals, specifically his arch rival Ben, were hiding behind the other chefs while leaving him out the dry, and Matt let this be known to Ramsey during his final 10 nomination plea. I was pushed and bullied off my station tonight while other members of my team is hiding behind one person. You hid behind Bobby. Ben hides behind Bobby, not me. I don't even have a voice in my kitchen. No one listens to me. I guarantee you if you put me on the red team, you'll see the failure in the blue team. Matty. Yes, chef. First thing tomorrow morning, you're cooking with the girls. Thank you, chef. Now, say what you will about if Matt was in the right here or not. However, the following episode was simply a karma masterclass. While pretty much the entire blue team, most notably Ben, laughed at Matt's plea and were certain he would struggle just as bad on the red team, he proved them all wrong as he carried the red team to victory, being named the best of the worst. Meanwhile, on the other side, Ben had an absolutely horrendous service and got ripped to shreds by Ramsey throughout the night, much to Matt's approval, as this is exactly what he said would happen to Ben, which led to his elimination. You know, as far as I'm concerned, Matty's a little bitch anyway, so let him go over there with them. They don't even know what they just inherited. Are you missing Matty? Can't say that I am, Joe. No? Nope. Does he make you nervous? No, 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 not at all. Matt! Yes, Chef! Come here. Taste that. Very nice. Thank Best you. Best results of the night. Thank you, Chef. Yep, yeah, thank you. Let's go. That's delicious, sir. But you are joking, aren't you? We've run out of lamb. I got it, Chef. I'll take care of it. Oh, f Damn, Jen, and I was the problem over there. It's easy for you. That's your problem. You've had it easy. You're not even busting your gut. Karma really bites you in the ass. Because if we're not, I'm going to complete my station tonight, Chef. Shut it down! Turn it off! You The one person leaving Hell's Kitchen tonight, Ben, take off your jacket and leave Hell's Kitchen. It's hard to imagine that anyone could hate Sterling, but a specific trio in season 13 teamed up to not only take him out, but take out their inferior competition as well. Before the episode 4 service of season 13, Aaron, Santos, and Steve came up with a plan to essentially throw the next service by making the rest of their team look bad, so that way they would get eliminated and thus be a stronger team going forward. Yes, professional chefs truly wanted to not get their customers fed in order to make the kitchen run smoother in the future. Sweet lord, the irony is off the charts on that one. You know, honestly, I say we just toss them up. Yeah. It's Frank, Ryan, Sterling, and JR. And that's who we're going to label as our dead weight to see if they can't be trimmed off. We have to get half our team kicked out so we can knock somebody off our team that doesn't belong here. So the three put their plan in the motion as they intentionally didn't communicate well with their teammates, causing the blue team to lose service. And during nominations, they defended each other while putting the blame on the likes of JR and Frank. So one could say their plan actually worked as JR was indeed eliminated that night, and thus, the three of them should dominate the blue team kitchen now, right? Well, not exactly. First off, in that service alone, both Steve and Santos had tough nights, as Santos got embarrassed in front of the VIPs and got kicked out of the kitchen, while Steve was put up for elimination by the same teammates he tried to sabotage, which should prove why this plan is so idiotic in the first place. Come here! Chef Ramsay says, come here. Your heart just goes to your feet. What does VIP mean? Very important person, Santa! Very important person, shout no, no. Very important person, shout So why serve the real salmon? He started off strong and kept going down, down, down. I changed my vote. I'm gonna change my vote to Steve. And I changed mine for you, boss. Dude, that didn't work. But the true karma came later in the season, as Aaron would continue to be inconsistent and ultimately quit at the final nine, with a pathetic quitter label on his head for all of eternity. Santos would be one of the few black jacket chefs in Hell's Kitchen history to not get a send off video package, while Steve would end up injuring his knee later that season and was forced to be removed from the competition. Okay, that one might be a bit harsh, but hey, the Hell's Kitchen gods are unforgiving, and the punishments for going up against the beloved Sterling and throwing dinner services are severe. I think still they should have gone home. The guy that thinks this whole thing is a joke and a game. So 100. Still ain't shut the up. Give me in the next, but then you can't even I respect me and my shut own thing. Right now, homie. That's real? Do shut the up right now. And that's real. You just, just disrespect me like that? Sterling, if you don't get the away from me, I'm gonna beat the living 
proud of you. Uh, this is bad news. I'm sorry. And I think you know what this means. Say what you will about Curtis's sushi performance in season eight and whether it was fair for him to be on a station that Ramsey knew he would struggle at, which led to a somewhat controversial elimination. However, the sushi station that night could have been a lot more smoother had poor Curtis gotten some help. Now, yes, the chefs are usually busy on other stations and can't always help Curtis. But on this night, Rob had multiple chances to slide over to save a sinking Curtis, but refused to help the poor guy as he relished in seeing his fellow competitors tank. Can you believe we're dragging a sushi? Curtis got the kitchen off to a really bad start. You know, I could slide over and help, but uh, that's not my problem. Let him sink. I've got the sushi now with no wasabi. You, f off out of here. But when the ties were turned and Rob was the one to struggle during service, he also needed and begged for help multiple times throughout the season, only to be ghosted by his fellow teammates, just like he did to Curtis. And the crazy part is, pretty much all his complaints came from Russell not helping. And you know this karma is pretty necessary when you're happy to see Russell freaking Cook take someone down, which eventually culminated in Rob getting eliminated over Russell after multiple services in a row where Russell refused to help Rob. I'm a little behind right now, Garson. Oh, come on. I am in the weeds so high. I don't know which way is up. When are we gonna get a little help on this garnish, man? <laughs> as soon as I can breathe. Russell claims he was in the weeds and couldn't get to me. How dare he not slide to help me? I'm pissed. I need an all day on Wellingtons. I need an all day on chicken. Tell me what I need. Just a Wellington, right? Russell just wasn't answering me, man. He was not communicating with me. You gotta talk to me. I mean, I can't get every entree in my head. Someone help me. Missed it on the ticket show. Yeah. Russell definitely could have helped. He's making the garnish for it and not letting me know he gets loud when Jeff Ramsey's on our side. Where are we at? And then like it's crickets when he leaves. Come on, Rob. Come on, Rob. Get your together. Let's go, guys. How about coming now, Chef? Whatever, man. My decision is. Russell. Back in the line. Rob, give me a jacket. You've outstayed your welcome, big boy. I can't, I, I can't, I can't put up with it. How do you feel that way? Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Take care. Good night. Nonetheless, it was wrong for Russell to ignore Rob like this, no doubt about it. And come on, we can't end off this video with Russell riding high into the sunset. So let's now fast forward to the finale, where Rob was the last chef chosen by Russell for his finale brigade. Now, while Russell did many things wrong in this finale, which ultimately cost him an easy Hell's Kitchen win, his worst instance came when he essentially attacked Rob for messing up in the kitchen, which is simply not what any leader of a Gordon Ramsay restaurant can do. Now, while Rob never said he was intentionally sabotaging Russell, something tells me he wasn't exactly disappointed with his bad night like he would be under normal circumstances. After the way Russell had treated him throughout the competition and was probably just as happy as Nona was to see Russell's door not open. Get the bench stop. Do Don't the bench just stand up. there and look around. Come on. I got it, Ben. It's right know. here. Where are you going? Relax. Just sitting here. Come yeah. on, Russell. Telling him, little snap. With no move for the at all. Step back. Work Step back. Up. Hey, hey. Don't touch uh, me. Don't, 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 don't touch me. Don't touch me. I felt like I was being sabotaged. You your boss. You will never get a job in any city I work. I'm gonna definitely blackball you guys because you guys me so royally tonight. Thank you guys so much for watching this video of Karma in Hell's Kitchen. If you enjoyed it, then please be sure to help out the channel by liking and subscribing and leave some comments down below of other HK Karma moments that I could use for a potential part two. With all that said, take care everyone and remember, do the right thing as Karma is always ready to strike. Get out of there.